Hello, everybody, and welcome to this uh, new series of webinar. We kick off today with a new digital work day. My name is uh, Arne Norborg, and I'm happy to say that I have our CEO, Svein Torgersen in Segal, joining in on this webinar. All these webinars will be recorded and will be available on our um, YouTube channel within 24 hours. You will then all receive an email with information about this. There's also during the presentation possible to write in questions in the question area on GoToWebinar, so please feel free to add questions there and uh, we will answer them depending on time at the end of the presentation. Um, I want to start before Svein kicks off with the main presentation with a few words about Segal and our company. Segal is a trusted provider of a hybrid cloud solution with software consultancy within IT and business and geoscientists. We have offices at all the main oil hubs around the world. And we believe that this strong combination of domain, uh, of IT and geoscience domain makes us a company that are suited for the solution and supporting companies in the energy industry in the future. We have a very scalable business that we have seen very successful now during these uh, difficult times we experienced over the last month. Uh, ensuring that our clients can scale their business depending on uh, the situation. Uh, Sven will also briefly touch about our new owners and the new setup of the company uh, in his presentations in a few minutes. But before we move into that, uh, I'm extremely happy to say a few words about the webinar series that we introduce now, our second webinar series. It's a total of seven webinars spanning over the next three and a half weeks, focusing on digitalization, focusing on uh, the requirements within the companies on sharing data across your company. And also we see that it's important to uh, also share uh, across different assets and different companies worldwide. And one of the important things, and I'm really happy to say that our QHSE manager, Frank, will give an introduction to security, which we all have experienced as a very important point during these days. He will kick this off next Tuesday uh, before we start talking about geo rooms, as we call them in Seagal, which is really a data room where we combine all different kind of uh, domain uh, understanding from the facilities, from legal, from finance, into subsurface, into one uh, digital room, which we call a geo room. We will then move on with um, uh, looking at how we can support engineering companies uh, with the same concept as we have now worked in the ENP business looking at hyperscale solutions, looking at how we can move data from on-prem to uh, cloud solutions, etc. We also will have a session on uh, 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 the importance of partners and the importance of supporting different kinds of ENP applications within our GeoCloud solution. We have a Today, we have more than 300 EMP applications across all domains, really, in our GeoCloud. And we are focusing a lot on our partners, supporting them, and making sure that all their applications are running smoothly within our solution. We also see now we are taking advantage of the opportunities to hyperscale and, and running simulations with uh, CPU extensive uh, intensive uh, processes and massive computing We are our Microsoft Azure solution and our collaboration with Microsoft. So Mattis and Ostbjörn will talk about this and how we are using, in our case, uh, uh, simulation software in order to speed up these processes, getting information about 
product, producing assets, getting information about uh, uh, simulation results, etc. through this. Before we finalize everything, focusing on digitalization and examples of how we can support our clients with specific methodologies and what we have as our own GeoCloud innovation space. So that's the different uh, webinars we will have now over the three and a half next weeks. They're all available through our websites and all of you here participating have already found the place to, 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 to sign up. So please feel free to sign up for any of these uh, uh, webinars. I will now give the word to Svein, our CEO, and he will give us his view on the new digital workday. So now I'll share to you, Svein. Feel free to kick off and take charge with your mouse on the presentation. Thank you very much, Sofa, and uh, thank you all for, uh, for joining today. Uh, hope you find some other uh, interesting or uh, relevant uh, webinars, which we are going to hold within the next three weeks, and uh, that you find uh, some time to, to also participate on them. So uh, today I will uh, uh, tell uh, you about a new digital workday. I will start with uh, one slide um, uh, with some information about Segal and our new owners on board. And then I will say something about uh, what happened the 12th of March when, uh, uh, yeah, uh, COVID-19 and, and everybody were moved to home office. Uh, and then uh, at the end, a couple of uh, thoughts about uh, what will uh, what will sort of uh, happen now. So uh, I just start off here and see if I can. Slide will change. Yes. Short update on Segal. So, uh, uh, first of all, we had in Segal we had a fantastic, uh, fantastic end of uh, last year. Uh, well, we signed quite some uh, new contracts that we are in the, the middle of delivering now. But we also got some uh, quite new, interested, uh, interesting owner uh, on our team. And as you can see here, uh, there is an investor consortium which is basically led by Novestor, uh, which also led the former consortium. And uh, the new investor is, uh, and the largest is DWS, which is uh, one of the world's largest uh, investment company owned by Deutsche Bank. And uh, you also have Agentum, which is the Nordic largest investor uh, that uh, are handling um, uh, quite of the investment of the Norwegian government and, and uh, the oil fund. And there are also uh, uh, quite some other investors in Segal. And as you can also see that uh, employees in Segals are owning almost 30% of the company. And uh, I think we are now closer to 250 employees owning uh, parts of uh, Segal. So this is a very good setting for us uh, uh, facing this uh, tough time as well. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, put together a, a new board where uh, we got some uh, new board members. And um, one is Lars Andresen, which actually is um, uh, working out of Silicon, um, Silicon Valley. He, uh, he took a company there, a security company called Rockforge. And, uh, and uh, now it's uh, actually on NASDAQ. So, but he's back now in Stavanger working with tech security and uh, international growth. We also have a, a new guy, Davor Petr Sutuya, uh, which has worked for Cognize, Fast and Search. He uh, is covering the market, sales, branding, and the product side. And uh, then we have Dagfinn Ringos, which is the CEO of Cisco, worked many years for Microsoft, uh, representing technology, uh, cloud, and also uh, renewables. So um, uh, very glad that this this uh, we finalized this uh, last year, and I think we have a, a strong team going forward. So uh, let's go into the 12th of March, 2020. As you know, things changed overnight. It was uh, sitting there, seeing uh, COVID infection um, reaching a, a extremely amount of people. And uh, we decided to move everybody home overnight. 
So all employees is now moved from a primary uh, location uh, to, to home office. And um, all the glo global office building uh, were closed. We have opened a couple now. But uh, of course, this is um, a huge uh, change for a company. And, and I guess many of you listening in, uh, you have experienced the same with, uh, with your company as well. Um, for Segal, uh, when, when things like this happen, you, you do a risk assessment. And for Segal, uh, it's uh, not uh, a risk having healthy people working from home. Uh, actually, our solution is built to handle those uh, situations. But our risk was to get a lot of sick people. So uh, we would have much less work, workforce to, to help our clients. So that that was an easy choice for us to to move everybody at the uh, at the home office. Um, and as you can see, it has gone uh, quite well. I will show you a couple of figures later, but we have uh, no one place have tested positive, and, and uh, we also uh, stay uh, tightly in touch with our, our clients to see if we are delivering quality and they are happy with our services. And you can see we get a good feedback, 4.91 of uh, six um, and there have been no major in incidents uh, not even on the security side for our product lines we see that cloud solution giving access to uh, you know a large amount of data and industry specialist software um, we became even more relevant to our customers we are we see that our services are vital for them uh, when they move their people at home to get the access to, to you know, all the operation and uh, everything they need to do. So that has become very relevant and, uh, and I think it would be that also in, uh, in the future. On the software, we see that the software is working well from home. We see a large stickiness on the software. So uh, good functionality that uh, people continue to use uh, also on their home office. And on the consulting side, which is maybe easier when you know, people start to cut, uh, we also see that uh, it's been quite busy here, helping the clients to get everything working. And uh, so, so far, I would say that uh, also consulting has done very well. So just to show you a little bit facts here, this uh, slide uh, or the graph on the left there show uh, uh, the sickness development in, in Segal. And we can see in you know, week eight, nine, ten, we have a little bit of three percent uh, uh, sick leaves. And if you go down to the COVID uh, when that started, you see that that dropped uh, uh, enormous. We are almost down in week fifteen to zero point three percent, which is basically nothing. Uh, and we see that it's picking up a little bit now. But I also have week twenty here, and that is that is down again. So we see that moving people. On home office, uh, uh, you know that people have been very motivated. They have been very flexible, and they're really, you know, trying to help the situation. And on the right uh, graph, that is the human capital index trend. We send that out to employees every month, asking the same five questions. And as you can say, that that is quite high in general in cigar from normally from four five, four, six, four, seven out of um, six. And you can see here it's getting closer to four, eight, four, nine. So that means that things are working well. They are uh, having the tools so they can get the job done and, and uh, also that they get the necessary information. So uh, so uh, actually an improvement, I would say, on on um, on the figures from uh, from the HR. Uh, if we see on the uh, operational, because that is also a touch point for us, and uh, here you can see that uh, when the COVID uh, infection really started to, to uh, do changes for, uh, for the business, uh, a lot of business sending people home, you see that it basically exploded in a number of cases into our uh, service management uh, system. So uh, we started to uh, lack of workforce, and then we decided we need to change someone tasks to, to help in this period. We did that, and uh, you, you can see now that uh, we are, uh, the cases are dropping. There will be around the same level of cases into the system now, 
but still you see uh, the cases is dropping. So this is actually showing us that uh, people working from home is working very efficient, even more efficient than uh, they do when they are in, in the office. So uh, we can say that we handle tickets faster and more efficient, efficiently from, from home. So then just to address uh, the COVID-19 is the big issue here. Uh, it is uh, stopping people from uh, going at the office, it's stopping people from traveling around. It is uh, uh, lowering the consumption of, uh, of oil and gas. And when the production doesn't drop as much, well, then you get the lower oil price. So uh, that is basically uh, the highest risk uh, for Segal and many of you listening in. Um, and if you see on the right side, you can see how, um, how Segal has handled this in the past. So I think we are very uh, critical and, and uh, essential for our clients now. Uh, you see that it's flattening out and you see a comment there, but um, it's actually a little bit growth even in, in these days. So uh, we believe our value proposition becomes even uh, more relevant, uh, you know, getting access to, to critical data. So uh, that is uh, the situation of uh, Segal uh, right now. So uh, the conclusion here, I would say is uh, so far so good. So uh, let's go into the main success factor. Three main, uh, well, there is a lot of success factors here, but I, I pointed out the three main success factors. So um, let's um, just start on this one. When things like this happen, there is a lot of uh, uncertainty. Uh, we have never done that before. We never sent, you know, 400 people home, 450 people home overnight. We are not sure how this is working. And I think there is also a lot of uncertainty with the employees. How is this going to work with, uh, you know, uh, balancing with our family uh, life? And, um, and I'm so proud uh, of my colleagues, how they have handled this situation showing an extremely moral, showing an extremely uh, flexibility. So uh, I know a lot of uh, the employees has had their kids home uh, from school, from kindergarten. Uh, they need to be uh, teachers and they're still going to, uh, you know, try to, to do their, their job in a good manner. Uh, and, and this has worked fantastic, um, fine. So um, this would never work as well without uh, employees uh, that really want to, to make the best uh, out of the situation. So I think uh, that will be number one. Uh, number two, uh, secure access to critical data and application. And um, maybe this seems like an easy thing to do. Uh, and yes, office application, Teams, application stuff like that well that is built for remote access but this industry has complex operation uh, within exploration drilling and production they have extremely amount of data they have um, uh, you know graphical 3d 4 d uh, graphical interfaces uh, a lot of processing power etc so this is actually not, uh, not easy. So uh, for, for many companies, uh, uh, th th this is a big issue. You can't move people home because you don't get access to your business's critical uh, data and application. And, and of course, that is one of the core uh, business um, ideas to, uh, of Segal. So, um, so and, and so far we have uh, got very good feedback on the solution. And, and hopefully this has helped our clients through this uh, extreme situation. So, and success uh, factor number three, digital collaboration uh, tools. Um, and uh, I think it's, uh, it's fair to say that uh, only during the last three to six, six months, this is a picture of teams, there has been a large development of uh, these kind of tools. So um, if it uh, hadn't been for that uh, recent tech update, 
I think we all will would be struggling working uh, from home. Uh, now we see that uh, collaboration tools like uh, like Teams here are working very efficiently. Uh, and, and I think also it's fair to say uh, going back to to link or uh, Skype, uh, you know this wouldn't have worked as well as it do today. Teams is much more than Skype and and Link. It's a collaboration tool. It's of course um, it's of course uh, video conference, uh, video chat, and and all, all the things. But as we can see on. On the screen here, there are a couple of examples. If you see um, the screen picture down to the left, you have um, uh, a business line, which actually have uh, its own workplace in Teams. And you see that this is the application management dashboard and everybody working with application management in Segal, they will get access to the processes, to the documentation, everything they need you know, to, to handle application management from wherever in the world. And if you see the, the big picture in the back there, the, that's actually for a large project implementation. And of course, you have chat, uh, you have file sharing, but you also have uh, uh, project management, you have a task bar, you have, a, you, know, you know, you have a lot of functionality built into this system. So uh, I think for uh, for Segal that was really a, a game changer, having access and really start to to use the functionality that we that we already have. So that was the three main uh, factors, and uh, where does that leave us now? At least uh, in Norway, uh, the measures implemented from the government are, are now loosening up. Uh, so we are allowed to, to uh, at a certain amount, go back to the office. For Segal, we have opened the office for 50% 50, 50 employees. Um, but um, we also see a lot of positive effects by uh, sitting at home. So uh, there will probably, after, uh, after this uh, COVID situation, there will come a lot of analytics. And uh, so basically, this is something of what I found on uh, on, uh, and you see the web page uh, down down to the left. Um, and this is for UK. Fifty percent of UK, UK workforce will be working remotely by 2020. And you see, there has been extremely growth already in the UK. Uh, 1.5 million people now are uh, uh, remotely accessing or working. 70% uh, workers in the UK would prefer uh, if they could work remotely. 80%, 82% say that would be more loyal if uh, they were had flexible working arrangements. And also on the productivity side, we see that uh, uh, sitting home, getting focused, uh, not having a lot of disturbance are are making you more uh, efficient. 7.7 .7 out of 10. Uh, are more productive uh, of a rating of 6.5 when you are in the office. And, and the last thing here is if you are going to be attractive to the new employees, uh, they are uh, looking for companies that have the skills to manage a remote workforce. So that's basically what this, uh, this uh, picture is, is seeing. So, and, and Segal, we haven't implemented anything special for this node. This is sort of a work in progress uh, for us. So, uh, well, there are some uh, pro, there are some concerns about this. Uh, what we see is that it's a lot of time savings, you know, getting to and from the office and, you know, sitting, working with something, just uh, put on your uh, headset, microphone, and then you are into meeting, stop the meeting, continue with working, getting in and out of, of meeting is very efficient. So, and also the feedback we see from the operational status, from, uh, uh, you know, sick leave going down, we see an uh, increased uh, efficiency uh, of the total workforce. You can have potential to reduce some office costs, but then on the other side, you probably need to do some investment so people have the right equipment, you also have the necessary uh, software to, to handle uh, remote, so um, it, could, it will also be some cost there. 
We said something about attracting talents and key employees. So we see that this will be a more and more demand for the new worker to, to have this uh, sort of flexibility. We have the environmental enhancements, you know, not traveling as much, using Teams, uh, you know, some of you probably work in large city, maybe you use an hour or two to just to get your job in a car and stuff like that. Uh, and then you have the balance between work and family life. And I have to say for myself, I have three small kids and I haven't seen more to them than I've done ever for <laughs> the two last months. And, uh, and that's really a, a positive uh, thing for uh, flexibility and balancing the work life. On the concern, lack of works, workforce uh, visibility. So uh, if you don't see your workers, how, how are you going to, uh, you know, supervising them? Um, of course, you can find a lot of tools helping you there. And uh, I think uh, using technology here will be a key to, to follow this up. Risk of time theft. Uh, well, there is a lot of things to do at home as well and you have kids running around, how do you manage to balance that uh, in a good manner? And what we see here now is that a lot of employees are using their flexibility. Okay, I need to help uh, my kids a couple of hours with, uh, with uh, schoolwork, etc. Well, maybe I sit a little bit later after they're in bed, etc. So you had a reduced uh, socialization, and I think one thing there is that uh, you need to use your facility well, so we talk about something that we call activity-based facilities, where you uh, don't have a sort of permanent workplace, but you have a place you can sit down, which is uh, uh, adapted to what you're going to do. For example, if you know that you're going to have a lot of teams meeting, well, go to the team zone. If you're going to have a, a working with a project, well, go to the project zone, etc., or quiet zone. So, uh, and uh, just to assure you that uh, this, this is uh, early days, uh, it's nothing that Segal has implemented, but it's things that we will try to learn and see if we can work more efficient uh, with the spending of time in the facility balancing with home. Integration of new employees, I think that is, um, that is a big issue, uh, you know, uh, uh, when people went home overnight, most of them were very, very familiar with who is doing what. It's easy to it's easy to take a phone and ask for help, etc. So uh, I think the also new employees they would uh, learn to know uh, each other. And and if you you are a new employee is coming from school, etc., you really want to work in an environment with other. Uh, skilled people. So, uh, so I think this is um, uh, maybe one of the biggest issue here. And then you have some cost and investment. You actually need to have your technology in place. You maybe need to invest in some new system, and you also need to invest in some equipment for uh, use at the at the home office. So, uh, my last slide. Uh, where I want to say that technology is the key enabler for the new digital workday. We talked about video conference tools. We talked about project management tools and workspaces, business uh, collaboration tools. Uh, we also have corporate performance management. You need, you need to have uh, control of your business. You need to have a good system following up, having KPIs, etc. And also you have a system that is uh, called employee, employee performance management system. And that is basically, I would say, is to uh, uh, acknowledge people for the work that they do. So they have a place to document, to you know, put their hours and, and really show that they are doing a good job, even if they are sitting from uh, home and, uh, and uh, they are not as visible as they was. So uh, this is something that Segal uh, hasn't implemented, but we are looking into a couple of systems. Uh. And then you have the sales marketing process. We see that uh, uh, probably for the next uh, years, it's already started to use more uh, technical tools to get the leads and prospect. So inbound marketing tools and uh, processes using uh, you know, social media to get interest, webinars, 
um, product uh, demonstration, etc. I think that will be a much more way to to work in the future on uh, on sales and marketing sites. It's a quite big uh, area to to cover on its own. So I guess my uh, ending uh, word, uh, stuff is uh, that uh, without technology, this would uh, not be possible. So uh, then I leave the word over to you. Yes, thank you very much uh, for a very interesting uh, presentation, Sai. Uh, there's um, there's uh, just a final note from my side. Uh, I want to uh, to emphasize the opportunity here to to look through and and join some of the additional uh, webinars coming up that we gave an introduction to initially. And uh, hope all, all of you that starting their working day today have a nice working day. And for those of you leaving for home, have a nice afternoon. And uh, please feel free to uh, send us any comments or feedback if you like to uh, have additional information. So thank you very much and uh, hope to hear from you all soon.